welcome to GGSP. This week on the show, we check out the latest game from the developers of No Man's Sky. It's the emotional puzzle adventure, The Last Campfire. The stranger met Ember's eyes. The two shared a moment of silence. Plus, a game all about making cars go fast for a third time, Project Cars 3. Hey, do you want to know the secret to winning races in games? Full throttle, no brakes, baby! Yeah! It is a shame those corners will get you, though. Uh, if every race was just in a straight line, I would be the best driver ever. But let's race straight into it and get the show started. <laughs> I promise you, there won't be. The Last Campfire is a beautiful little puzzler brought to us by Hello Games, where you play as a cloaked figure called Ember, making your way through an otherworldly plane of existence and helping out lost souls wherever you can. Hope has returned to a forlorn. This is a bit of a tough one to talk about without kind of giving away the big overall meaning, so here's your warning. The world of The Last Campfire is one of mystery that manages to be both creepy and calming all at the same time. With eerie forests inhabited by a giant frog, sinking slums ruled over by a hungry piggy, and areas so dense with fog it'll feel like you're going around in circles. The fog was so blinding, Ember was turned around. Ember's job is to make sense of it all and rescue the forlorn. Other embers who have been so overwhelmed with sadness, confusion and hopelessness that they've turned to stone, unable to move on. How you can help them is by completing the puzzles that in a way represent the problems holding them back. Like a chef who is so obsessed with perfection, he forgets why he fell in love with cooking. It's supposed to be my new soup recipe, but it's not ready, it's not done. I'm a sucker for this kind of storytelling, and I like the variety in the puzzles and how they weave these underlying and really relatable fears into them. There are very similar pieces to each puzzle that you'll see cropping out throughout the fairly short playtime, like snaking carriages you have to move about to cross flooded areas, and pressure plates you have to juggle to unlock pathways. Which some may feel to be too repetitive, and that's totally fair, but I thought these familiar patterns helped to tie these little stories together. I will say, though, the majority aren't overly complicated, with fairly simple solutions you can figure out with a quick glance. There were a few that tripped me up at first, but that was more down to me not paying close enough attention. Because you're always given all the information you need, it's just a matter of piecing it together. Outside of the self-contained puzzle sections, you'll also be collecting items to unlock new areas and further the story. What you need to do with them isn't always obvious though, so there is definitely an element of wandering around until you trigger something, which may not sit well with those looking for a more brain-teasing puzzling experience. On the technical side of things, I also had some issues with drops in frame rate, some strange environment glitches, and the dialogue being cut short. Tremendous, terrifying shapes slithered from the shop. The snake's body coiled around the floor like a scaly shield. None of these were deal breakers, but they did somewhat snap me out of the moment a few times. It's very obvious that while the puzzles themselves are crafted with care, the story is really the main focus of The Last Campfire. It plays out almost like a fairy tale with a melodic, disembodied voice narrating your journey, which I just adored. They couldn't rest in that place forever. While its larger meaning is quite heavy in a way, I never felt like the game was taking itself too seriously or trying to tell me how to feel. There was no, oh, look how deep and meaningful this is, feel sad now. Everything I felt just came naturally. At the end of the day, The Last Campfire has a simultaneously heartbreaking and heartwarming tale to tell and does it in a way that's both engaging and makes sense within its story. While they aren't overly challenging, its puzzles still carry a sense of satisfaction from completing them and provide enough motivation to keep you wanting to go on. Combined with the gorgeous art style and beautiful music, there's a lot to enjoy in this small package. Despite its technical bugs, I still came away feeling glad for having played it. So I'm giving The Last Campfire four and a half out of five rubber chickens. 
Welcome to the scoop! Are you ready to get stuck into some gaming news highlights? Oh, I sure am. Let's begin! First up this week, Nintendo finally announced plans for the 35th anniversary of everyone's favorite mustachioed plumber. Woo! From an online Battle Royale-style platforming challenge, Super Mario 35, to a new version of the Game & Watch, to the toy racetrack AR game experience sure to upend living rooms everywhere, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. There will also be crossovers with other Nintendo games, including a Mario-themed Splatoon 2 Splatfest and Super Mario Furniture set to pop up in Animal Crossing. The Wii U game Super Mario 3D World will get a Switch port with added content known as Bowser's Fury. And more classic Mario 2D games will join the Super Nintendo Switch Online catalog. Plus, confirmation of the long-rumored Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which brings a collection of 3D Mario classics to the Switch in optimized form. The games are Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy! While most of the big stuff rolls out over the next few months, the catch is several of the games will only be available for a limited time. A curious decision. Perhaps taking a leaf out of Sonic's book? Uh, gotta go fast! <laughs> Moving on, we heard a bit of news about the event formerly known as Minecon Live and Minecon Earth, now known as Minecraft Live. This year's Minecraft livestream extravaganza will be going ahead on the 3rd of October and is sure to bring us all sorts of Minecraft news, updates about updates, and a vote for a new Minecraft mob. Fingers crossed for a robot mob. On to some more news now, and the Four Guys Ultimate Knockout developers have teased plans for an upcoming edition known ominously as Big Yeetus. The large spinning mallet is set to appear randomly in certain stages, like Dizzy Heights, and will have the capacity to either fling your fall guy to the finish, or, as the name suggests, yeet you into oblivion! No! No official word yet on when Big Yeetus will hit the streetus. Now, what do you think? Should we have an extra scoop? I think so. Japanese comedic character Pico Taro teamed up with the Pokemon mascot Pikachu for Pikato Pico, a bizarre yet intriguing translation song. Pikachu, Pico, Pico, Pikachu. We got you, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. We got you. <laughs> Pika, Pika. And that's all the time we have for the scoop this week. Until next time, so long. No. <laughs> I consider myself a bit of a car connoisseur. One of my first gaming memories was playing the original Gran Turismo alongside my dad. I drove a Lego car on the show last year. And I was practically a race car driver at the age of two. recommend that maneuver. So yes, I know cars and car games, and Project Cars 3 is certainly worth discussing. With no Forza or Gran Turismo in sight, Project Cars 3 has skidded on over to give us our yearly taste of rubber and smoke. Ditching its usual Grand Tours in favor of class-based events, you'll work your way through a variety of race types, earning XP and credits, as well as further unlocking different events. There's also a list of extra achievements to grab during each race, and an XP system rewarding you for clean takeovers, drifts, and the like. It's certainly a step down from the larger, more sim-like racing of the previous game, this time skewing to more short arcade racing for the casual fan, which doesn't always work in the game's favor. For the majority of the game, you'll be stuck with the single free car you get early on. Of course, you'll need to pick up a rally car or a classic car along the way, but most of the time you'll be upgrading and customizing a single motor to best suit each event. 
which is fine if a little draining having to constantly stare at the same boot, but it also strips away any sense of progression. In games like Forza or Gran Turismo, you'll get a new car as a reward, but that thrill of progression is just not here. Great driving, you nailed it. That was absolutely dominant from start to finish. Races give you the bare minimum of cash, so you won't be buying any new cars for a while. This means you'll just eat away at that budget in order to tune your current ride, further pushing a new worthwhile purchase out of sight. If this was a simulation game with longer events honing our skills in a single car, I get it, but here they're angling for an arcade racer, and you come to this expecting to drive a variety of fast cars. But instead, I'm stuck behind the wheel of my Honda Civic for 22 hours, and if I wanted to do that, I'd just go on a family holiday to Alice Springs. But if you do want an easy way to try a variety of cars, you can always jump into the multiplayer and Rivals events. Rivals offers up a set of time challenges, popping you in fast cars, varied events, and long leaderboards. These events award you with rival points dependent on your spot on the leaderboard. These are added to your monthly rival rank. With the higher points you get, the better rewards you'll reap. There's also multiplayer, which includes scheduled events, basically proper races. These allow you to qualify for a spot in the starting pack and compete with players across the globe. And if you just want to join a quick play event, well, I guess nobody's home. But isn't everyone at the moment? But hey, whilst we're on the menu, let's talk about that ancient device. Do you need to upgrade your car for a specific event? Well, you'll need to exit the event, go all the way back to the main menu to get to your garage, make your changes, then head all the way back again to start the event. Oh, once you've hit that podium finish, you'll just want to roll on to the next event in the cup, right? <coughs> nah, we'll make you go back to the selection screen and make you choose the next event. Oh, and there is way too much loading for a game of this caliber. Poor menu design is something we should just be past in video games, but Project Cars 3 is such a backpedal in quality, and the visuals only hammer that home. They're not particularly horrible. Cars glisten in the sunlight, rain droplets form as you blast through soaked tracks. But overall, there is something very last generation about it. All the models and tracks just seem a little low quality. This was a thought I had in passing, but when the entire world turned into a glitch fest like this... I realized something was up. Now, one of the best elements of Project Cars 2 was its sound design, and sadly, they've messed with that here too. Gone is the subtle purring of a vehicle, the specific sounds of each track, and the generally immersive feeling of racing. It's now just wall to wall, vroom vroom, Look, when everything is functioning and you're amongst the pack, it's by no means a bad racer. You race and it's fun in the moment. But you never feel like you're correctly progressing throughout the career mode, and there's barely any depth to satisfy racing sim fans. So it comes across as an average, cheap feeling, yet fully priced racing experience. So I'm giving Project Cars 3, 2 out of 5 rubber chickens. Okay, it's time for Ask SP. Now, I seem to have misplaced my thinking cap, but I've got my answer pants and my shirt of knowledge, so I think I'm still dressed for question success. Let's start with this video from Elsa. Hello, Judy SP. My name is Elsa. This is my question. What is the most popular Angry Birds game? And this is for Darren. Bye, GGSP. Oh, best get Darren on the line. Greetings, you've reached Darren. Hey, Darren, it's Rad, Ask SP. I've just got some emoticons for you. Oh, what interesting text. Oh, what is that, Sanskrit? Clear or Colombia, click, click. Thanks, Daz, and thanks, Elsa. Oh, Darren, you're an Angry Birds fan. What would you say is the most popular Angry Birds game? Oh, well. While the whole Angry Birds series is quite successful, it's the original Angry Birds game that would be considered the most popular, if based on the number of downloads. There were reportedly over 3 billion downloads of the game during the first six years of its release. 
And while there have been numerous well-received sequels or spin-offs, the original is hard to beat in terms of sheer popularity. Three billion downloads? That's a lot. Oh, some question for you that I just thought of. Dan, what's your favourite Angry Birds game? Oh, I'm rather fond of Angry Birds Space. Reminds me of my travels through the cosmos. Oh, those Mars rovers really know how to party. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'll bet. Well, thanks, Darren. Oh, wait, you might want to stick around for this next video, which comes from Audrey, who is Elsa's sister. Hi, GSP. My name is Audrey. My question is, is there any good puppy games for iPad? This is for Darren. Bye. Oh, blink and you'll miss it. Uh, some more things for you to do, Darren, if you please. Right. <clears throat> Spreadables. Riddle me this. <laughs> ah, thank you, Darren. Thank you, Audrey. Now, puppy games for the iPad. Um, what would you say, Darren? Well, there are lots of simple dog or puppy games available for iOS of varying quality. From endless runners to pet care management sims. But the standouts in the bunch, in my opinion, are puppy puzzle platformer Mimpy Dreams, which has an enchanting art style and some clever mechanics. You can try out its free predecessor, a short game just called Mimpy, to see if you like it. Then there's Dog Simulator, where you play as a cheeky, destructive pup causing all sorts of mischief. <laughs> and the simple pup puzzler, Puppy Run, Ultimate Maze Puzzle, which is actually based on the Jules Verne story, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Some of these games are free, or at least free to start, which means you're likely to see ads, timed barriers, or in-game transactions. So, check in with your grown-ups before getting bamboozled by all those puppy dog eyes. <laughs> Good point, Darren. Puppy dog eyes are the most powerful type of eyes. Thanks! Bye-bye! Oh, and robot laser eyes are much more powerful. But, but, <laughs> bye. Uh, well, let's sneak in one more quick vid, and this one comes from Max. I've got two questions for you. One. Do you think Subnautica Below Zero will ever come out on Xbox? Two, do you know any survival adventure games on Xbox One? Thank you. Thanks, Max. Firstly, yes. If you mean the Xbox One, that is. The developers plan on bringing some Nautica Below Zero to both Xbox One and PlayStation 4 as soon as possible. Though they have said they don't like to predict dates. But both Subnautica games are apparently coming to Switch next year. So 2021 could be a safe guess for its Xbox arrival, if not before. And aside from Subnautica, some survival adventure games you might like to try for Xbox One include the space survival of No Man's Sky, Astroneer, or Surviving Mars, which mixes in management strategy along with the survival stuff. Then there's Don't Starve and the multiplayer expansion Don't Starve Together, or the new Aussie-made Windbound. And let's not forget classics like Minecraft and Terraria if you haven't already given those a spin. But that is all the time we have for Ask SP this week. If you've got a question you'd like to ask us, go here to send it in. And if you make it a video question and we answer it on the show, you'll score some cool GGSP loot. You know, those were some good answers. I think this shirt of knowledge really works. What else you got for me? Did you know that a cow-buffalo hybrid is called a beefalo? Huh. What else do you beefa know? We've come to the finish line of another episode, but coming up next week, we check out three of the best platformers of all time in Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And battle through the spell-slinging, magical multiplayer action of Spellbreak. And don't forget to get your extra tasty, extra snack-sized slice of GGSP on the ABC Me app. Where Rad crashes on an alien planet and builds a factory while fending off giant bugs in Factorio. And that's no easy job. If I had to move that many things, I'd flail about wildly too. 
But until next time, may all your games be good ones. Gem out. Will out. Rat out.